2018 season underway from DeSanto Field on a wobbly kick out of bounds. And the Spartans will have it first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Right on cue as one of the Blue Angels flies overhead. We're probably going to have a few of those throughout the course of the night tonight. The uh, Cleveland Air Show this weekend celebrating the Labor Day holiday. And we have seen some airplanes flying over Case uh, all throughout the day. Here come the Spartans on offense. And they are led by freshman quarterback Drew Saxton. Six feet tall, 185 pounds. He is from South Fayette, Pennsylvania. And a young man that Greg Debelak, again, was very complimentary of. He said, this kid is absolutely capable of being our long-term quarterback here. And he's going to get an opportunity to start as a true freshman in his very first collegiate game. We'll face a 3-4 defense. First offensive snap of the season is a misdirection fake. And then a dump out to Justin Fan. Shakes around a little bit. He's got a first down up near the... 46-yard line will be just shy of that. Looks like they'll mark him at the 45, but a 10-yard gain and a first down. Case runs the hurry up as Saxton hands the football off quickly. Sam Jenkins bulldozing ahead. Jenkins picks up five. Second down and five. Boy, this uh, Spartan group is wasting no time in snapping the football. That time it didn't work out to their uh, benefit. Stopped in the backfield by Jack DiPolito, a freshman from Harrington, New Jersey. Offensively across the line for Case. From left to right, Derek Klontz, D. Ghost, Brennan Ryan, Thomas Strayer, and Steve Backey. DeFrancesco, Fan, uh, Colton Morgan, Joey Spitali. All receivers we'll see throughout the course of the game. Little screen pass out to Justin Fan. And even though his mouth guard popped out, he protected the football pretty well. It's going to set up fourth down and short. And Greg Debelak says, okay, we'll punt the football here. Now in the meantime, one of the things that I hope doesn't throw us off throughout the course of the game, but <laughs> it might at some point. There are two number fours. For Case, one of them, Drew Saxton, is the quarterback. The other one is Chase Witte, who is a wide receiver, but he is also the punter. So even though you see four in to punt the football, that is not Saxton, that is Witte. And Case's first possession of the year results in a punt pulled in without any issue by Rochester's Dan Diaz. So Rochester takes over first and 10, 13-16 left in the opening quarter. You get a look there at Greg Debelak. 15th season at Case Western Reserve University. A 1988 graduate of John Carroll, which is about seven miles up the road. 102 wins, 43 losses for Greg Debelak. Six UAA titles, four NCAA playoff appearances, and last year his first PAC championship. That was a big one for this uh, Case football team. Rochester's first play from scrimmage. A gain of about a yard on a run from Sean Mannion, a junior from Rochester. There are a lot of New York natives on the uh, Rochester Yellow Jackets. Noah Shinneman goes out wide to the right. Slot on the left side is Dan Diaz. From the gun, Gallagher on the move. Finds an open man, Connor Byrne. It's a Rochester first down. Pushed out on the play by Kevin Chrysis. Matt Gallagher and Josh Brown, both seniors for Rochester. And both will probably see some time at quarterback early in the season, but it is Gallagher that gets the start. Gallagher throws near side. It could have been intercepted by Joshua Smith. Instead, he just deflects it away. Boy, Gallagher really stared down. Near side receiver Dan Diaz, and it almost became a pick six. 12.30 left in the first quarter, no score. 89 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and a breezy night blowing from left to right across the screen the way you're watching it. Mannion up the middle, great hole by the offensive line. 
He's able to get into the second level of the defense and gang tackled just shy of the 40 at the 39-yard line. The officials blew the play dead because one of Case's defenders lost his helmet. <laughs> okay, for the first time we get to say it this year. We've been looking forward to it. Nickname is Money, but it's Munyarazi Menguede. Trying to figure out what's going on here. They, unless there was a penalty on the play. I admit I did not see a flag. There we go. Now they make the motion for the offside. So it will be second down and five instead of third down and three. Second and five from the 37 as Gallagher works out of the shotgun here. Press coverage on the outside for Case. Fakes the handoff. Gallagher's got his tight end. A completion to Daniel DiLoretto and a nice gain across midfield. It's officially a gain of 13 and a first down. They'll say he stepped out right at midfield. Good work by DiLoretto. And a nice tackle by one of the Spartan captains, a strong safety, Patrick Crossy. So it's first and ten for Rochester. Back to Mannion. And he runs right into the thick of that defensive line. Case Western Reserve's defensive line is the heart of this team. Cam Brown, Ian Henderson, Tyler Bushman. The uh, starting three seniors up there. And they have played very well throughout the course of camp. And when they scrimmaged John Carroll a couple of weeks ago, Pretty much only played a half, but the story of the scrimmage was how well Case's defensive line played. Second and a long six. Mannion on a short out route. Out of bounds the left-hand side. Shy of the first down, but not by much. And Mannion continues to get several looks here early in the game. Rochester relishing the opportunity to play under the lights. Not something they do very often. In fact, this is their first night game since 2012, if you can believe that. So it's third down and one. Trips bunch on the right-hand side. Fake handoff and a quick screen pass and a beauty. First down, Rochester. Noah Shineman grabs it for a big game. It's a 13-yard pickup down to the 28. Shineman is having a really nice start, and honestly, I've been just as impressed with Matt Gallagher. He is commanding the offense really well. Yellow Jackets are ready to go. On the first and 10 play, it's Mannion over the left side of the line, and he is swarm tackled. Ian Henderson, the first one to hit him. A gain of four down to the 24. Second down and six. Mannion, a newcomer to the Rochester side this year. No carries for him last year for uh, the Yellow Jackets. Gallagher, lots of time to throw toward the corner, and it's pulled down. Touchdown. What a catch by Connor Byrne. And the Yellow Jackets are on the board. Twenty four yard touchdown pass. Connor Byrne. Lots of uh, tussling down there on the sideline. And the extra point is up and good. That was a really impressive catch. So Rochester has a 7-0 lead. After their first possession goes 
more than 80 yards up the field for the score. We'll take a quick timeout. Case scheduled to get the ball back when we return to DeSanto Field. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Spartans punted on their first possession, and then Rochester went up the field and scored a touchdown to open up the game. It is still early in the first quarter in the 2018 season opener for Case Western Reserve and Rochester. Brendan Gulick with you. Glad to be filling in for Andrew Luffglass here in week number one. Andrew will take you through the rest of the season. This is Zach Hall for the Spartans. He gives the Spartans pretty decent field position up to the 27. And that's where Drew Saxton will go back to work. Hall was trying to follow his blocks, but just didn't have a whole lot open up in front of him. You know, the other big challenge, and you heard Case Sports Information Director John Schwartz talk about it with Greg Debelak in our pregame interview. It's very difficult to prepare for a team that you just have no film on, no familiarity with. Brand new head coach on the uh, Rochester side, but a new offensive system in general as Sam Jenkins runs further laterally than he does north and south. Might have picked up a yard second and nine here. Greg Debelak referenced that uh, this is the fourth year in a row that the opening opponent for the Spartans has had a new offensive coordinator or new offensive system. So this is not unfamiliar territory, but it doesn't make it any easier to prepare for. Saxton through the air. That's his specialty, and Justin Fan up near midfield. First down on a 22-yard completion. Saxton trying to run the hurry up, throws a screen out to Fan. He's across the 45, down into Yellow Jacket territory. Five-yard pickup, second and five, 8.30 left in the first quarter. Rochester by seven. Case is wasting no time. Jenkins crunched over the line of scrimmage. I think you got to give Rochester some credit here. They certainly don't have the ability to make a substitution. Perhaps part of the strategy here is to wind down the defense. Saxton threw a short ball to Justin Fan. But Justin couldn't keep his hands on it cleanly. And now it's fourth down and two. Spartans are going to gamble and leave the offense out there. Three targets to Saxton's left. Looking that way, it is tipped and intercepted. Originally tipped by Noah Barnard. And then intercepted on the near side. I believe that was by one of the linemen. Yeah, it sure was. Ricky Simsik actually is uh, playing inside linebacker, I beg your pardon, leading returning tackler for Rochester. And even though it goes as an interception uh, on the stat line, it essentially just works out as a negated play. Not a huge deal, but certainly not what Case was hoping for there. By the way, we hope you'll stick with us throughout the course of the night, especially in the second quarter when the commissioner of the PAC, Joe Anderko, is going to join us throughout the course of the second quarter. Excited to get his take on not just uh, what Case has meant to the conference, but what's going on around the pack into the 2018-2019 uh, school year. About the midway point here of the first quarter. Rochester scored on their first drive, second down and seven. And they continue to get good chunks at a time. Connor Byrne, who caught that touchdown pass, knocked out shy of midfield. It sets up third down and well, pretty much three full yards. Yeah. 
Rochester spreads things out. This time the tailback is Jason Cunningham, and he can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle back there by Joshua Smith, who almost had a pick six early on. And it sets up fourth down for the Yellow Jackets. Time to punt it away for Rochester. It's Josh Brown is back deep to send it out. Justin Fan underneath it at the 15. Angles to his left, thinks he can outrun. Big hit on Semsic. Fan still inside the sideline and yanked out across the 40. Great return and it fires up the near side as it should. Cam Brown delivered the big block. It sprung Justin Fan for another 20 yards. All right, Case goes back to work. Drew Saxton. Hopefully he's got the jitters out of the way now at this point, given that he's a couple of series in. Plenty of time to throw the football. He'll roll out to his right. Boy, he's got a man wide open, and he throws it just a lick behind DeFrancesco. Incomplete. It was a good-looking pass, but thrown behind him. Second down and 10. Saxon gets the play near sideline. 626 left in the first quarter. Motion man is Spitali. Hand off now to Sam Jenkins. Nowhere to go. A loss of three, and it's third down and 13. Jack DiPolito, first one to get to him. Defensive tackle and a freshman from Harrington Park, New Jersey. Case 0 for 2 so far on third downs. We'll see if they can improve upon that. Saxton needs the Rochester 46 here. Just a three-man rush, tons of time, and a bullet to the near side for a first down. Right on the money for sophomore Colton Morgan. Nice completion there from Saxton to Morgan. And now Giuseppe Orsini checks in. As does Adam Zibko. They get a look there at Justin Fan out wide on the right-hand side. Spartans down 7-0, 520 left in the first. On the fake handoff, screen back to the near side. Orsini sprung free down the left sideline and out of bounds inside the 20. Great patience by Giuseppe Orsini. And he found an opening up that left sideline. Nice gain as Greg Debelak's team is inside the red zone for the very first time. Sexton turns and hands to Jenkins. Tried to squeeze his way over the line of scrimmage along the right side. Didn't pick up much. He stopped on the play by... Steven Sparakis. Just a short gain. Second down and call it five.
Saxton patiently looking around, lines up in the pistol. On the fake handoff, turns and finds an open target. Past the first down marker. Adam Zipko, first down case. Three fifty-two left in the first quarter, and the Spartans are on the move on a drive that started well back in their own territory. They've moved the football a good 60 yards here. Zibco and Fan lined up on the left side of your screen. There is one additional wide receiver out further left, and that's Orsini. Jenkins up the middle, down inside the five. Kind of got tripped up. Noah Barnard, the linebacker, finished it off, but I think Tim Mascari is going to get credit for the uh, tackle. Case is bringing Brennan Ryan back in at center here, and they are also checking in Thomas Del Mastro who is listed as a defensive back, but he's going to come in here and line up as a running back left of Drew Saxton. Jenkins runs behind him, and he's got plenty of room. Dives across the goal line. Touchdown, Spartans. It's a good effort from Jimmy DiOrio to try and keep him out of the end zone, but well done by Sam Jenkins. First touchdown of the year for Case. And now Robert, uh, excuse me, Robertson Albrecht on for the extra point. No problem. Case and Rochester tied at seven with 240 left in the first quarter. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. What a beautiful night. You get a good look there at the Wyant Athletic and Wellness Center. One of the newer buildings around the uh, beautiful DeSanto Field. Case just finished off an eight play, 56 yard uh, drive. Three minutes and 54 seconds off the clock during the drive. And they have tied the game up at seven apiece. Brennan Gulick with you. 2.40 left in the first quarter. Long kickoff down the field is a really good one. It'll be returned here for Dan Diaz. And he got leveled. We have seen a pretty active game so far from Joshua Smith. On the defensive side, but now he gets involved here on the special teams. All right, so Rochester back at work. Yellow Jackets scored on their very first possession of the season. That had to be encouraging. Get a look there at Diaz, who seems to be fine after... Taking that hard hit. Gallagher, the quarterback, I don't think he got it off in time. I have a feeling we're going to see a delay of game penalty here. Again, that's Jimmy Burks, our head referee today in the white hat. So Gallagher backs up five yards with the rest of his team. It'll be first and 15 here. 
Jason Cunningham on the carry. Not much going on. Tackle on the play by inside linebacker Isaac Withrow. Clock stops briefly. It looks like there may be an injured yellow jacket, and it is the ball carrier, Jason Cunningham. Sophomore unable to get up on his own. Hopefully he's okay. Meanwhile, a chance to remind you that the Holiday Inn Cleveland Clinic is the preferred partner of CWRU Athletics. Mention CWRU teams when you're booking your next day. Again, the Holiday Inn Cleveland Clinic. K7, Rochester 7. 2.20 left in the first quarter on a postcard perfect night in Northeast Ohio. Let's take a look around the President's Athletic Conference today and try to give you some updates on some other scores. Bethany did not fare well right from the get-go. They fell to Ursinus 34-13 as Cunningham is still receiving some medical attention. Teal had a tough time with Alfred, who is one of the better teams in D3 football this year. Teal lost 44-16. Westminster fell by a score today of 34-21 to Wittenberg, who's ranked 14th in the country. W&J got off to a good start. The first team in the pack with a win, 37-12. They beat St. John Fisher this afternoon. Bearcats from St. Vincent lost on the road at Ithaca, 38-14. Muskingum of the Ohio Athletic Conference opened the year with a win over Waynesburg, 31-24. Grove City knocked off Huniata, 38-23. And the only other game that uh, will be played simultaneous with this one is a night contest between Marietta and Geneva. Marietta graduated All-American running back Roger Walker last year. So we'll see how the Pioneers look in 2018. But Marietta and Geneva playing tonight. And then, of course, Case and Rochester. In the meantime, Cunningham still down on his back. And hopefully he'll be okay. But the uh, attention from the athletic training staff as he just now gets to his feet. He's having a tough time walking off under his own power, being helped, in fact, by a couple of teammates. So while Case is trying to regroup defensively here, this probably puts more of an emphasis on the offensive side on Sean Mannion. Mannion has seen the lion's share of the carries anyways. But without Cunningham available now, hopefully he's okay. Mannion back in there as Gallagher rolls to his left on second and long. Chucks a long ball up deep down the field, and it's right on the money. Dan Diaz, first down all the way up near midfield. Gallagher, across his body, on the run, throws a perfect tight spiral, and Diaz makes the catch. This does not look to me like a Rochester team that went 2-7 and seven last year. On first and ten, Gallagher back to the game through the air. And this time, Noah Shineman couldn't hang on. Incomplete. 147 left in the first quarter. Case and Rochester tied at seven. There's Cam Brown, who was a Westlake Demon in high school, playing in his senior season, a captain on that defensive line. Gallagher from the gun, hands off to Mannion. And he is swarmed in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Skyler Wattis, the first one to get to him. Third down and nine. Rochester needs the case 42 to move the sticks. The tight end, Justin Dahl, is lined up in the slot on the right-hand side. Crowd trying to get behind the Spartans as Gallagher looks back to the air. 
Tries to run away from pressure. He does. He throws a long ball down the side that's tipped incomplete. Tried to find Justin Dahl, but he threw it out of bounds. Great pursuit here by Travis Johnston, the sophomore from Bishop Rosencrans. And a great defensive play by Patrick Crossy. It's fourth down, Rochester just shy of midfield. And the Spartans get the football back, which Greg Debelak is certainly happy about. Justin Fan waiting for the punt. He's got it at the 22. He is so shifty. <laughs> Didn't bother calling for a fair catch, despite the fact that he was going to get hit almost right away. And it will be a Spartan first and 10 from the 25 in just a moment. Again, the opening game of the season for both of these two sides. Case coming off an 11-1 year in which they went unbeaten through the regular season before losing in the second round of the NCAA playoffs to Mount Union. We just saw Adam Zibko lined up. Spartans have gone to a new quarterback here. Ryan Coolidge getting his first snaps of the year. And he hands off to Fan on the end of round. Should be good enough for a first down. Looks like he picked up a full 10 yards. Sure did. Case starting to play in some light rain. Just a few clouds overhead, but nothing wild. But it is lightly raining here in Cleveland. Now Zach Hall going to the right-hand side. Second effort, maybe got him up to the 37. Should be a gain of two. Second down and eight upcoming for Zach Hall, who's a sophomore out of New Albany. Case last year, well, they were able to run the football pretty well most of the time when Jacob Burke would touch it, but Rob Kuda... A dual threat quarterback ran it quite a bit. Maybe this year a little different. One quarter in the books. It's K7 and Rochester 7. When we come back, we'll be joined by the commissioner of the President's Athletic Conference, Joe Onderko. He'll join us throughout the second quarter. That's coming up next here on Media Vision at Case Western Reserve. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Beginning of the second quarter, Case with the football. They flip sides of the field in late raindrops here tonight at DeSanto Field. 7-7 tied up with Rochester in the opening game of 2018. I'm Brendan Gulick, thrilled to be joined here in the second quarter by the commissioner of the President's Athletic Conference, Joe Anderko. Thanks for joining us. Brendan, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, a great night for football to open the 2018 schedule. I know... Right before you came in, the rain started to sprinkle, but it's not uh, not really going to be a threat throughout the course of the night. Meanwhile, Case starts the third, or I should say the second quarter, with a nice find of Luke DeFrancesco out of bounds for a first down. Yeah, they were calling for worse today, but I think we got off light. It looks like uh, might get a little bit of a, a passing storm over the, over the city here, but uh, I think we're going to be pretty good for the most part. Yeah, in fact, if you'd mm -hmm. checked the weather earlier this week, Boy, it really was ominous. Yeah. I think we've dodged a, a major bullet throughout the weekend in general. Absolutely. But, it, uh, it, no, it's been a great opening weekend for us in the PAC as a whole today. So, It certainly helps uh, some of the fun barbecues that people are bound to have. Colton Morgan on the reception all the way down inside the 30. It's a pickup of 23 and a case first down. 
And you can see Case starting to get their feet underneath them after that kind of rough start. It looked like Rochester kind of had them back on their heels a little bit early in that first quarter. But this is settling into the Case team that we saw last year that was PAC co-champions and uh, really doing some nice things on offense here. Greg Debelak, a veteran head coach for the Spartans in his 15th season now at Case. And I have to imagine that as a commissioner, it's nice to have coaches who've been around the league a lot and uh, know the kinds of conduct you're expecting, yeah. and, and this case team has always carried themselves so well. Absolutely, and, and Greg's an absolute pro. And it's been, you know, th this is the fifth year, I believe, that Case and Carnegie Mellon have been in the PAC as affiliate members. You know, one of the things we talk about with both of those teams is how much history there is with the conference, though, that, you know, both – schools go back in our conference history in Case's case way back to the beginning of the conference but ever since coming in Greg has just been wonderful to deal with sends such a positive message to his players and, and they just represent the university so well both on and off the field second down and 10 early second quarter Saxton through the air complete to Justin Fan so we saw a little bit of Ryan Coolidge at the start of this drive and then Drew Saxton the freshman goes back in there Always kind of fun to watch a true freshman quarterback yeah. in his very first college game. And, and a guy, you know, I, I'm obviously based over in western Pennsylvania, sure. you know, a guy that we're pretty familiar with over yeah, there coming out, so. of, coming out of South Fayette. Uh, you know, had obviously an incredible high school career and, you know, pretty well known. And, and you know, so not surpri not totally surprised. You're always a little surprised when you see a freshman get that call early, you know, with a great program. But that just speaks to the, the type of player he is and how much confidence the coaching staff has in him. High school football in Cleveland is so important in the uh, general culture in the communities. Saxton sidesteps a couple of tackles and then floats oh, nice. one over the top incomplete. Nice escape there. He escaped about two or three times when it looked like he was going to take some negative yardage. Yeah, he sure did. But yeah, sorry, go I, ahead. No, no but I, yeah. I don't know if people in Northeast Ohio who are very mm -hmm. passionate about right. high school football, I don't know if they really recognize or appreciate just how good high school football is in Western PA, and the accolades that Saxton achieved really are that impressive. They, they are, and, and in some ways, Northeast Ohio and Western PA are kind of mirror images of each other. I mean, the cultures are a little different. I, I grew up in Western PA, but I started my career in Cleveland, so I've, I've spent a good bit of time in both. And it's so funny because you talk about like the NFL rivalry, but I think the two cities are more alike than what they realize, and certainly the culture, the, the cultural importance of high school football is so big in both regions. I couldn't agree more. Saxton finally finds Justin Fan first down to the 12-yard line. A nine-yard pickup in case continues. Nice job going through his progressions the there. Really was to, to find the open man. That was not his first option, but uh, you know he cycled through and able to make a positive play in a first down. And he comes off the field as Ryan Coolidge goes back out there. Uh, if you've joined us a little bit late, I'm Brendan Gulick, along with the commissioner of the President's Athletic Conference, Joe Anderko. Thrilled to have you alongside here for a beautiful night uh, in Cleveland. Coolidge on the option right through the middle and down inside the 10. Well, I want to dive into some of the stuff around the uh, around the pack, but I don't want to interrupt a touchdown drive right as <laughs> it's about to finish no, uh, yeah. or potentially a scoring drive, probably the uh, – more politically correct way to say it. And it's kind of interesting watching Case with the two different quarterbacks. You know, one of the things talking to John Schwartz, you know, your SID, was that, you know, the style is going to be a little bit different depending on which quarterback is in there. They bring a little different skill set each. And, you know, uh, you know, Greg and the offensive staff going to adjust depending on who is in there calling plays. Well, Saxton has gone back out. 12 minutes to go, second quarter. Sam Jenkins... Good pass protection is the running back. A rifle over the middle, and it's bobbled by Colton Morgan. Incomplete. Oh, he's going to have that one in his nightmares tonight, I think. <laughs> Just a bullet pass. And it looked like there might have, might have, the linebacker might have got a hand on that, might have uh, disrupted it just enough there, number 44. I beg your pardon. That was actually Adam Zibko. Yeah. I thought it was Colton Morgan going across the middle, but Zibko they couldn't hang on. They are both lined up here on the right-hand side with Fan and Spitali lined up wide left. Third and seven, Case and Rochester in a tie ball game early second quarter. They could get a first down at the three without scoring. Coolidge, first down and touchdown. Yeah, just a clearly a designed quarterback draw, just waited for it to develop, found his hole and hit it hard. Nicely, nice play there for the Spartans. There you can see it on the replay. Good uh, elusiveness and burst to the end zone. So Ryan Coolidge with the first rushing score of the season. 
for a quarterback. It was a beauty. Second rushing touchdown tonight for Case. They have a 13-7 lead as Robertson Albrecht, freshman kicker, on for the extra point. And we might have a Good. substitution issue here, or maybe not. Oh, timeout. I'm a little surprised they took a timeout. I would have been. I saw somebody rush off well, late sure, there. Yeah, and that's what were... made me think that it might have been a substitution issue. But, right. Uh, no, I, I totally yeah. agree with you, but yeah. I'm surprised they took the timeout. Perhaps if it's just a five-yard penalty, you'd rather yeah, take that absolutely. on the kick and save your timeout. Yeah, but no question. What, uh, whatever the case <laughs> might be, Rochester chose to call a timeout. So with 11.48 left in the second quarter, Case has a 13-7 lead. Let's talk a little bit about yeah. the pack and what's going on. Uh, it's a conference that's been really well represented nationally across several different sports. Uh, one that immediately comes to mind away from the football field is in women's basketball yeah. to have Thomas Moore yeah. uh, and, and the way that they've represented the national scene. Just mm -hmm. one example of some really incredible talent. It is, and you're right. We've had a lot of success in football, but, you know, clearly what they made their mark in women's basketball. But, I mean, it's really across the board. Last winter, Brendan, we, we had three different national champions in three different sports uh, from three different schools. So, I mean, it speaks to the depth. In other words, it's just not one school – Dominating, you know, we had one in soccer. The heavyweight wrestling champion was out of Waynesburg. Uh, the indoor uh, hurdles champion was out of Geneva. So, so we're we're really fortunate. It's a conference that has a lot of history. You know, we're in our 64th year of competition. Uh, you know, one of the stories I love to tell is that the, of the four schools that founded the PAC in 1955, one was Case Tech and one was Western Reserve University. So, I mean, there is so much history in this conference that started right here, you know, with what is now this institution. So, you know, Case coming, Case Western coming back in uh, five years ago, it almost feels like it's come full circle a little bit. Love that it has because mm -hmm. it's a conference with a lot of pride, maybe yeah. more than anything else, uh, on top of the, the, you know, the student athletes and the success they've had uh, out on the field. Uh, I think there's a lot of pride – within the schools, right. you know, for being in the conference. And it's it's kind of fun when, for example, when, you know, Case is able to see some of their rival schools compete on the national level. You, you want your conference to Absolutely. perform Absolutely, well. sure. You're, you're, you're always supportive of those moving on. It reflects well on everybody in the league when that happens. And, you know, clearly that was the case with football last year, Brendan. I think both Case and also Washington and Jefferson, both, you know, finishing 10-0, Obviously, the anomaly of the unbalanced schedule kind of worked out. <laughs> and really, I don't think it worked out in a bad way. You know, we had two great teams. It's unfortunate they didn't get to face each other. But they both got NCAA bids. They both got wins. And, you know, with the statistic I've used, there's only two conferences in the nation that could have claimed that last year. Yep. Have two teams in and get first-round wins. That's us and the New Jersey Athletic Conference. You know, and as you know, you, you know, if you see this league – it's not the only two great teams. Westminster was very powerful. Certainly we know what Carnegie Mellon brings. Uh, Thomas Moore, when they were in, was consistently in the mix. So, you know, and now you see teams like Grove City and Geneva starting to try to make that rise into the upper tier. So we're, you're right. I mean, I think uh, pride is a really good word that you use. We do have a lot of it. And I, I think it's reflected in, in the institutions and how much athletics uh, means to our overall, to who we are and what our mission is. Rochester starting their drive here with uh, a slightly positive play. It'll set up second down and seven, 11 20 and counting in the first half. Gallagher handed the football off to Sean Mannion, who again will probably have the vast majority of the carries here with Jason Cunningham leaving the game with an injury and not sure if he is able to return or not. The other thing I think that uh, as you follow the, the pack, they have done a really good job of creating some fun regional rivalries mm -hmm. with schools from other conferences, the North Coast Athletic Conference, the Ohio Athletic Conference, the MIAA, the, the HCAC. It makes regional rivalries fun to follow because so oftentimes when you get into NCAA tournament, those are the schools that you know, the, the conference <laughs> champions often right. line up with. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned some just some great conferences in our region here in the in the Great Lakes. You know, the North Coast especially, I, we kind of consider our, our sister conference. You know, we, we you know whether it's Allegheny being over in western Pennsylvania, almost all of our schools play Hiram, Wooster, Oberlin. Denison. Denison, I, I, exactly. I mean, there's just so many natural fits. And then the OAC, you know, we had two – had a great battle between the PAC and the OAC today between Waynesburg and Muskingum. 
Geneva and Marietta are in a tie game tonight in football. So I, I think you're absolutely right. We, we have you know built and nurtured those rivalries within the region. And uh, I, I think there's renewed interest and high, really high interest within this region because of that. Justin Fan on the fair catch. You can see 10-39 left in the first half in case we'll try to add to their lead after scoring 14 unanswered points. If you've uh, just tuned in, I'm Brendan Gulick along with Joe Anderko, the commissioner of the President's Athletic Conference. What do you want to see yeah. in terms of some growth for the conference? What's the next step? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, I've got this a lot, obviously, because for folks that don't know, Thomas Moore College has moved on. They're not in the PAC this year. Uh, this is going to be their final year in Division Three. actually. They're going back to the NAIA where their, their roots are uh, starting next year. You know, we, we're in conversations. Uh, I wouldn't say there's anything imminent. I, I wouldn't say we uh, feel like we have to expand. Uh, certainly, you know, from a football standpoint, we've got 10 football teams with, you know, so we've got a full schedule. There's not a, a real urgency there. You know, what I tell people, Brendan, is if there's something that makes sense, if there's something that's going to make us a stronger conference, academically, athletic, athletically, from a recruiting standpoint, uh, you know, we're going to look at it. And uh, we're, we're, our presidents are really proactive in examining any opportunity that's going to strengthen our league. And uh, if that doesn't happen, they're not going to expand just to expand. That, sure. that, that would be my how I would say we're going to approach it. Saxton looking deep down the right side. He was starting to run out of time, but showing some great composure tonight. Just not that time, unable to yeah. find a, an open target. But my goodness, I think he, he probably should have. Yeah, after the first two or three missed tackles, he had an opportunity to probably throw that away. But uh, some you can see right there, great athletic ability, and uh, then finally the Rochester defenders catch up with him near the sideline. So it sets up third down and fourteen. Case needs. Their own 47, even shy of expansion, mm -hmm. though. I mean, what are some of the initiatives that the conference is taking to just try and continue to get more competitive, more well-rounded, et cetera? Well, I, I think, you know, as we go through this transition with Thomas Moore going out, it's allowed us to kind of refocus on our mission. And, and you know, the real mission, and this is where I think Case and Carnegie Mellon tie in so well. Saxton, nice run big there. run up the yeah. middle. First down on a gain of 18 yards. I mean, and this is getting, a, you know, outside of the athletic world a little bit. But what we are really about, what we were founded on, is integrating athletics into our overall educational philosophy. In other words, we don't want the college here and athletics is way over here on the side doing their own thing. We are all about, you know, it is integral to everything we do educationally. And, and I think that's reflected in just the high percentage of athletes on each of our campuses. So, yeah, we have really looked at some ways to, you know, in, integration is probably the key word there. And again, th those are things that, you know, for Case and for Carnegie Mellon both, they're ju it's just such a natural fit because obviously that's, that's a principle that has always been the case of both of these two Absolutely. great campuses. Right. No, there's no doubt. I mean, Case is uh, – Case I, I would, and, and Carnegie Mellon, certainly I don't want to leave them I, I would off, say athletically some of the things we're doing, you know, we're, we're preparing to launch a new digital network, which, uh, you know, you've seen probably some conferences do where uh, – uh, in the in the final phases of that, I would expect an announcement of that about that in the very near future. So I think that's going to allow us to kind of reach our our market a little bit, reach our alumni. Uh, you know, I, you know, certainly social media. We've really picked up some of the things that we've been doing. Uh, Kevin Fenstermacher, who's the director of communications for the PAC, just does a wonderful job in that area. And uh, you know, again, you know, I think the other challenge we've had is we've had a lot of presidential turnover the last couple of years. We are a presidentially driven league. And so now we're getting our presidents in their second, third years. They're starting to say, hey, let's take a look at some things that maybe we haven't done in the past. And uh, that may open up some options that, uh, you know, in, in the past we might not have done, but we may have some new opportunities coming out of that. It's actually first down and 10, despite the fact the scoreboard says third and 10. And the uh, ball is at the 39-yard line for Case. They have really pushed the tempo here ever since – Kind of coming out a little bit on their heels in the opening drive defensively. Saxton against a four-man rush. He's Broke. got a wide oh. open teammate. Had a broken coverage there and <laughs> just couldn't quite make the connection heading down the left sideline. Colton Morgan was awfully open. Tough one. Yeah. Well, the good news is 
Saxton has the kind of arm strength to be able to put those kinds of throws on the money. Some of those are just well, you, me you mentioned about misses. tempo. They really tried to go tempo right from the first from the first uh, drive, but then they kind of got hit for a loss there on that first drive, which I, I agree with what you said. It really did kind of put them on their heels a little bit. Now you can feel that momentum starting to shift again and them really being methodical moving down the field. Well, this was a case team that was – I mean, they were taking a couple of seconds as he completes a right. <laughs> pass to fan. I mean, literally – Tackle made, play over, and the next snap <laughs> roll, right. was within five, six seconds. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah, and, and but but they've seen so you've seen so much success with that. And sure, you know you know the thing is with Greg Debelak, you know no, you may beat a case team, but you're not going to out coach them. He's going to have them ready to play. They're not going to beat themselves. And if there's a weakness out there to exploit, they're going to try to exploit it. Well, the nice thing about a, a program like Case, just in general. The uh, intelligence level of the well, players yeah, is don't worry. through the roof as Jenkins goes steamrolling through the middle for a uh, solid gain. It's I, I think uh, one of the 15 things, yards. I think one of the things you're starting to see here, especially as we get towards the end of the first half, and we I saw this at the game at Grove City today. They were playing Juniata. You know, Rochester does not have a big roster here. You know, certainly nowhere near Case's size. And as warm as it's been, as humid as it's been, you know, you start to wonder if there's going to be kind of a you know a, a bit of a an effect of the heat taking its toll, especially the, as methodical as Case has been. It's got to wear on this Rochester defense. Yeah, Rochester, for those who are unfamiliar, we certainly don't want to get too deep into it, but their program went through some uh, really tough turmoil. They had uh, a coaching change, and Chad Martinovich is committed to writing the program. This one's thrown Ooh. toward the end zone, nearly picked off with one hand by Adam Baji, but incomplete. At, at the same time, I was going to say, everything I hear about this new Rochester coach is that he is really top-notch. Oh, he's an A-plus guy. And is going to really have them on, on the rise here in the near future. He is uh, yeah. a coach that comes to Rochester after spending the last nine years at MIT. And in Greg Debelak's words, he said, look, a coach that is used to recruiting at a school like MIT is probably going to have success yeah. at a school like Rochester right. because you're recruiting the same kind of kid. Yep. And and Greg pointed out that so much of the Rochester uh, lineup, so many of their of, of the players on their roster are from the state of New York as Saxon goes bulldozing wow. up the middle, and he does get in. Touchdown, Spartans. Case having a lot of success getting the, spreading it out. And then once the quarterback gets past that first line there, there you can see there's nobody left there. He gets past the linebacker, and it's just open field. Again, good elusiveness to, to get to the end zone there. Really impressive play from the true freshman, Drew Saxton. But again, the idea of being able to recruit nationally right. like Chad Martinovich had to do at MIT, that same kind of mold right. seems to fit at Rochester. And so... Uh, in terms of trying to rebuild the football program, and that's one you've area got the where, academics to sell to a kid for and that, sure. Absolutely, and that's one area where you know Case and Rochester, the UAA schools, are probably a little different than some of our PAC schools, which have tended to be more regional recruiters. But I think one of the things we're seeing, and you've probably seen it, is we're seeing much more national recruiting in the PAC. You know, especially Westminster has really hit Florida hard. St. Vincent has hit Florida hard, it, and it's, I think it's just a function of demographics. There just aren't enough graduating seniors in this region to feed everybody. Sure. But yet you look in places like Florida or Texas, you know, Case and CMU have always gone wherever they needed to go to get players. Sure. It's a function of the high, the high academic level. Well, I think what you're seeing is a lot of our other schools are starting to do that too. They're realizing, especially in the South, there's a paucity of Division three schools. We can get down there and find some really good athletes who fit our academic profile and can be difference makers at our school. Absolutely beautiful night at DeSanto Field. That was sort of a trend that started with some of the higher football powers in Division Three, namely in Ohio, Mount right. Union. So many players from Florida. And then it started to trickle into other schools right. uh, in this region, whether it was within the OAC yep. or the PAC or, or the NCAC. And now it for lack of a better way to say it, it almost feels commonplace to yeah. have yep. you know a, a dozen kids from southern states sure. like Florida. Well, in Westminster's case, they had a, a coaching staff that came out of the one double A ranks at like Robert Morris and St. Francis PA. They were recruiting all those kids anyway, so they right. saw it as a natural progression. When they came into Westminster, we're going to just keep recruiting the same kids, and we may not get as many of them, 
But I think they have 22 kids on their roster at Westminster from Florida this year. Uh, you know, St. Vincent, it certainly makes sense. That if you've ever been to Latrobe, where they're at, right across the road from campus is Arnold Palmer Airport, which has daily flights back and forth to Orlando. Yeah. So, so they'd be crazy not to take advantage of that. Nice hit on the uh, near side. The linebacking core from Case tonight's done a nice job. That was Skyler Wattis. And, uh, you know, you, you talk about St. Vincent. Yeah. Personally, I'm, I'm a big fan of what uh, head coach Dr. Ron Dolciato has done at, at St. Vincent. I know maybe the win-loss record hasn't mm -hmm. been where they wanted, but I really feel like he's brought a lot of stability to that program. Yeah, I, I think, you know, with St. Vincent, I, I think the whole key for them, they, they just got to find that young quarterback. You know, that's been the one thing they've been missing. They've had great skill position guys, Damon Black. They've had some great linemen and some solid defenders. They just – the one year they had a, a quarterback who was a transfer senior – and they had a winning record, but they haven't been able to locate that young quarterback that they could just lock into. I think if Ron ever find, when he finds that, Look that's out. when you that's when you're going to see them take that <laughs> jump. That's exactly right. No doubt about that. Yeah. In fact, Ron Dolciato and Greg <clears throat> Debelak have some ties together. Both are uh, graduates of John Carroll University, which is just a few miles up the road here. In the meantime, it looks like there's a timeout on the field with 5:09 left uh, in this first half. If you joined us a little bit late, we're visiting with the commissioner of the pack, Joe Anderko. Would you mind sticking with us after sure. this timeout? No, that's fine. All Absolutely. Right, we'll step aside yeah. real quick into Santo Field. More with Commissioner Anderko when we return here to Case. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular spectacular accommodations. That seems like the perfect place to take <laughs> in the game tonight, doesn't it? The Wyatt Athletic and Wellness Center looking out uh, just over the top of the north end zone. The Spartans are defending the south end zone here. It's third down and four. 5.09 left in the second quarter. A oh, beautiful pass right on the money off his back foot. Matt Gallagher connects down the far sideline with tight end Daniel DiLoretto. It's yeah, a first down for clearly, Rochester. Clearly a mix-up on the coverage there. Two of the case defenders went deep and left the tight end underneath there. So good read by the Rochester quarterback to make the first down pass. By the way, an update from the Marietta-Geneva game. Late in the second quarter there, Marietta has a 21-10 lead over Geneva. We will rerun through the other scores in the pack this afternoon at halftime for you. Gallagher looking long down the middle, but he overshoots Tyler Tainan. Yeah, Tainan had a step there, but uh, clearly overthrown, didn't have much of a chance at it. I've been pretty impressed <clears throat> with Gallagher today as a quarterback. This is a guy that really didn't see a lot of time last year. He, he played in several games, but mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily meaningful minutes in those games, and I, I think he throws a really well, nice ball. The one throw he made in the first quarter where he was rolling to his left, had to stop and set, and then hit a guy about 30 yards downfield just in just right in stride. And a super a tight spiral. Really, really impressive throw. I, would, I agree with you, absolutely. Gallagher has his team still competitive as you get a look at Actually, I think that's a commercial airline. <laughs> that's not part of the air that's show. That's not I part of think. the air show, but <laughs> we have definitely seen some Blue Angels here tonight. I, that's one of the things I love about coming to Cleveland, always, always knowing the air shows going on Labor Day weekend. Love it. It is a beautiful sunset evening here on the shores of Lake Erie. Third and five for the Case defense. Gallagher, quick throw over the middle. Nobody home to cover the tight end. DiLoretto down inside the 10. Well, deja vu all over again. We had just said they had had a coverage breakdown two plays ago, and there it is again. Nobody going with the tight end. He is wide open. Big play there for Rochester, and they're knocking on the door now. First and goal. They'll put him down at the 7. The running back at this point is Damon Yargo. 
He takes this one right over the middle and goes nowhere. Yeah, Yargo a little tentative there. You know, just came in. You could tell he didn't hit that with a whole lot of confidence. And, boy, you only need a split-second hesitation, and those case defenders are going to be all over you. Especially Joshua Smith at strong safety, who's played really well in the run game so far tonight. Second and goal from the six after what they're calling a one-yard gain. Both teams packing the box. Gallagher looking, throwing, tipped, incomplete. Boy, real opportunity for the Spartan defense there. Once that tip ball went up, you know, they were, they were thinking turnover. 2.49 left in the first half, and now it's third and goal. Rochester probably feeling here like they need to get in yeah. the end zone because they're going to start the second half with the football. Three yeah, points can, wouldn't be deadly for them. No, but, but if, boy, you can, they if they to. can get within a score, you feel like you're still in this football game. If they don't, and uh, you know now Case, you know especially as well as they've moved the ball, it's going to be a lot more challenging. Gallagher and looking, and he almost threw an interception. Boy, you could see from the camera angle there. That was uh, uh, the, def the Spartan defensive back just had a beat on there. You can see, look at his eyes get real big as that comes right at him. <laughs> he just can't believe it went through his hands. Brian Victor almost <laughs> pulled it in. And so the Yellow Jackets will settle for a short field goal try. It'll be a 23-yarder from just inside the right hash. Place kicker, Dawson Klinger. First field goal try of the year, and it's good. So Rochester pulls within 11 at 21-10 with 2.41 left in the uh, first half. Let's get to some of those other pack scores for you. We'll run through these. Ursinus on top of Bethany today, 34-13. Wittenberg, number 14 ranked team in the country, upended Westminster, 34-21. Nice win for W&J to start the year. They're a top 15 club, 37-12 over St. John Fisher. Alfred, supposed to be a really good team this year. They knocked off Teal 44-16. Ithaca at home on uh, on top of St. Vincent 38-14. Waynesburg fell today to Muskingum 31-24. Juniata, on or I should say Grove City on top of Juniata 38-23. And the Marietta-Geneva game is still in action. And I, <clears throat> I was at that Grove City-Juniata game today. And, I, and, you know, this Grove City program is going to be an up-and-comer. Andrew DiDonato is in his third year really took over a program that was absolutely at the bottom of the PAC. They, I think they went three years without a win, something like that. But, uh, you know, they have clearly started to turn the, the corner. They got four conference wins a year ago. I, they haven't beaten Juniata in many, many years. So uh, a very impressive win for the Wolverines to open the campaign. Klinger getting ready to send it away. We'll give you some other regional scores that might be meaningful to you. Good kick down the field, fumbled. Jenkins picks it up, and nowhere to go with it. Yeah, that I think if he could have got outside that contain, he had some openings there. But you know, and sometimes you'll see that with a fumble on a kick or a punt, you know, everybody kind of converges, and then all of a sudden the receiver is able to find a lane. But uh, a nice job here by the outside guy for Rochester, not allowing them to to get that outside lane. There's 2.35 left in the first half. There is some laundry on the field here. So while they sort that all out, the other two greater Cleveland area Division three schools, John Carroll University played today, and they were up in Wisconsin to take on the Pointers from Wisconsin-Stevens Point. Handled them no problem, 45-21. And Baldwin-Wallace played on Thursday. An illegal block in the back on the return. So Case has to back up now to the 10-yard line. Baldwin Wallace played on Thursday, and they boat raced Alma 63-21. to Baldwin Wallace had 11 offensive possessions, two fumbles and nine touchdowns. Yeah, the Baldwin Wallace led by Jim Hilbert, the former Thomas Moore head right. coach, who uh, went on and won a couple state championships at LaSalle High School down in Cincinnati. You know, very, very talented coach, and you know, not surprised that he's going to have them knocking on the door at the top of the OAC with uh, with Mount Union and John Carroll. 
up near the 14-yard line. So a gain of, call it three and a half, almost four yards, second and, well, for our purposes, we'll call it second and six. We mentioned that uh, Muskingum beat Waynesburg earlier today. Ohio Wesleyan, who's a school that often crosses over with PAC foes, they played Otterbein in a battle of two schools that are down in the Columbus area. And Otterbein beat Ohio Wesleyan 10-7. Another school that reminds me of Grove City yeah. in terms of their lack of success for a while in football is Wilmington. Wilmington, over a seven-year stretch, went 2-68. and 68. Yep. Last year, won two games and were very competitive in the others. Today, they won their season opener 49-7 wow. over Earlham. That's, that's impressive. I, you know, I know Terry Rupert real well, the, the athletic director at Wilmington, and he told me actually a couple of years ago that he said, we've got a, a good good young coaching staff. If we give them a chance and don't get impatient, he thought they could turn it around, and clearly you're starting to see those those seeds germinate now if, with, a, with a good confidence-building win. That's, that's the biggest thing when you're trying to turn around a program is to – to get that that reward for your players, you know, especially when you're in a league like the OAC and oh, you're, yeah. you're playing just those monster programs. So that's got to be huge for their confidence going into the season. It was Giuseppe Orsini on the near side with a nice catch. Ohio Northern is a 27-17 leader right now late in the game against Adrian. Mount St. Joe's, who is out of the Heartland Athletic Conference, they lead Capital 38-14. Mount Union is pounding Rose Holman, 24-0, right, uh, right before halftime. Here's Orsini one more time, another first down. And uh, still plenty of time, 126 oh, yeah. to go. Uh, once three again, timeouts. Is, yeah, I mean, Case just being very methodical here, uh, grinding out the first downs, and they're already into uh, Rochester territory at the 41. Junior Ryan Coolidge is in at quarterback. Drew Saxton has had the lion's share of the snap so far, but we've seen Coolidge a few times in this first half. Case trying to add to a 21-10 lead. That one was thrown just a little yeah. bit behind DeFrancesco, and it slowed him up a gain of just one. And Case calls their first timeout with 105 left. Yeah, probably wouldn't have got a whole lot there, but you're right. Having that, having to reach back and get that didn't have much of a chance for anything positive, but a, a heads-up play by Greg Deblack, knowing he'd have uh, eaten a lot of time if they had not used the timeout right there. How about for the alumni of some of the schools in the pack that maybe have not been connected right. as, uh, as frequently lately? Um, what would your message be to them in terms of trying to come back to the conference to enjoy what they have to offer? Well, I would say this. You know, I, I think if, you, if you're talking about people who maybe were in PAC schools in the 80s or 90s, we're a very, very different league than what we were then. I, I always say we're not your father's PAC. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's hard to believe, but it was just probably 15, 16 years ago. We were a six-school conference and uh, no automatic bid. Right. In anything. Right. And uh, the question wasn't, can we be a great Division Three conference? The question was, are we going to survive? I mean, if you don't have seven, you're not really viable in Division Three. Right. And, you know, credit to the presidents at that time. They were really strategic in going out, and they they first found Thomas Moore, which needed a home. But then St. Vincent, Geneva, Chatham all came right in line and really grew it up into the conference that it's turned into. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it in a while, it's a, it's a great time to check out the PAC. Good fight from Coolidge on second and nine. Greg Debelak had started to call timeout, but it was not really an emphatic signal, and so maybe he was able to take it back. Yep. And they will keep the clock rolling 45 seconds. See what Case can do on third and 13 here. Flag down, play continues, perhaps a defensive penalty. Yeah, that came from the linesman on this side, so... Trisha Caldwell Cravener, the head linesman, yep. and it is an offside. So Case got a free play there, and they're going to get another shot at it. That'll make it about third and nine at the 39. And I think if you're Greg Deblack, you see right there, you're thinking about what, what yard line do you have to get to to give yourself a shot at a field goal if you're not able to get in, into the end zone here. Remember, Case will kick off to start the second half, so they are thinking – We've got a score because it might be a little while before we get the ball back. Coolidge, he can do it with his feet. Runs through the middle, and now Case calls timeout with 30 oh. seconds left. 
We get a late flag thrown in at the that end. Was, that was really odd. A case player came running in at the end, and the, and the umpire got knocked down. And I didn't see exactly why they came flying in. Let's take a look at the replay here. It was Sam Jenkins. And Rochester kept a couple of spies home. And you'll see, look on the top of your screen. Oh, he got hit. They got hit from behind by, by 51, and that's what knocked the referee down. Okay. I just saw this player come flying in, and they couldn't see why that was. But clearly they got blocked into the official. Well, hopefully the officials will get that straightened out because it was clearly not uh, malicious. Looks like it's going to be a defensive hold, I believe. Uh, they think it may be called a personal foul. Are they? Okay. And it looks like it's going. Here you can see it again on the Rochester. top. Yeah, it's going to be on Ricky Simpson. Yeah, that's what they're going to say for him pushing the case player into the official. That's a 15-yard penalty well, and an automatic a... first down. 29 seconds left in the second quarter. First and 10 from the 19. Coolidge. Good protection, looking for the end zone, throws it up, and it's not picked off, but dangerous pass. Yeah, that's a tough one into in, in triple coverage, basically. He had, had coverage over the top uh, both ways. He was feeling pressure from his backside, so probably felt the pressure to get that off, but that, that was dangerous. That could have very easily been picked off. Even with the intention perhaps to throw it away instead of take a sack, you got to put a little more on that rather than throw it into triple coverage. 23 seconds left in the first half. Case has two timeouts to work with. As to whether or not they're in field goal range, it'd be close. It'd be a 36-yarder at the moment. Coolidge over the middle, right on Justin Fan. First and goal. Spartans want to hurry up. Okay, they may spike this real quick just to save the timeout. We'll see. 14 seconds oh. in counting. Coolidge keeps it himself, trying to wiggle through, and he is in! Touchdown, Case, with just five seconds on the clock. Well, that's a big play right there going into halftime. And especially you're letting the clock run. If he gets stuffed here, you know, they're going to have to get a quick timeout and then make a decision. But that, just that last push of the offensive line allows him to squirt through and get into the end zone. Big, big play for the Spartans there. Greg Debelak and Ryan Coolidge look there like they might not have been on the same page about something, but whatever the case was, Case got away with it. <laughs> and Sparty kicks an extra point. 28 to 10, just five seconds before halftime. It's been a great first half for Case. It has, yeah, especially after a bit of a rough start. You're seeing uh, that, you know, this is a team that's still rolling after winning the co-championship of the PAC last year. and. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think clearly they're going to be in the mix again this year as we move on, and I, I'm sure I'll see them down the road. We try, I try to get to every one of our schools at some point in the early first six, seven weeks of the season, and that means a lot of football doubleheaders. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, but that's a lot of fun. This is, the, this is the part of the job you enjoy. So No doubt about that. How about, uh, look, we've talked a lot about football in the conference and yeah. Case in particular, but what are you most proud of here just in terms of athletics in general at Case? <sighs> That they, that these kids are pull. I mean, they have such pressure on them, both academically from a time management standpoint. I mean, they are they are put under stress in so many ways. I mean, you know, they have to. They're missing practices because of labs and different assignments and internships, and yet they still come together for for a great athletic uh, team, great experience. I, I mean, I just can't say enough of the kids here, the student athletes all the things they have to juggle and yet to still have the success they have. I, I just think that's – I think it's incredible. I mean, I, I know I, I couldn't have done that when I was in college. Me neither. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, I, I think you could say that about all of our schools, but especially with a case with the academic bar being so high. And, they're, and like I said, they're pulled so many directions. It's incredible to see them able to juggle it and be successful across the board. The second quarter tonight presented to you by Dave's Cosmic Subs. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the first half between Case and Rochester. It is 28 to 10 Spartans at halftime.